I think there are a fair number of people this election who aren't quite sure how they're going to vote. They certainly don't like Trump, but they might not be crazy about Harris either. They're stuck with a question. Should I vote for someone I may be less enthusiastic about? Or even, should I vote for the lesser of two evils? If you're a part of that group, this video is for you. I think we all know there are only two candidates that actually have a shot at winning. But maybe you're thinking about voting third party, or not voting at all, as a kind of protest. The argument is that if enough people do the same thing, the major parties will have to take notice and make concessions. This sounds good, but would it really work out that way? Not voting obviously doesn't accomplish much. Voter turnout is already low in U.S. elections, and fluctuations in voter participation haven't led to any major changes in party platforms. Voting third party seems like it could work, but it actually has an even worse track record. Looking at the few recent presidential elections where a third party managed to get even a few percentage points of the popular vote, none of them led to a single policy concession. In fact, it seems like oftentimes the opposite happens, a backlash against the third party for being a spoiler. In 2000, Ralph Nader may have cost Al Gore an incredibly close election against George Bush. Not only did this give us the president who started the disastrous wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, Gore was actually one of the first to warn us about climate change. His election would have given us a 20-year head start on that problem. Following the election, support for environmentalism crashed and still hasn't fully recovered. In 1992, Ross Perot ran on a platform of fiscal responsibility in moderating the Republicans, goals that I don't think I need to tell you were not successful. Unfortunately, the political reality in the U.S. is that protest votes are ineffective at best and may actually hurt your cause. But maybe that's the point you're protesting. Some people look at all the problems with our two-party politics and decide that participating at all implicitly supports a system they hate. But I've got bad news. The U.S. has had low voter turnout rates for over 100 years, and the system is doing just fine. Not participating won't change anything. By not voting, all you're really doing is handing over power to existing institutions. But does voting actually accomplish anything? It's obvious that, despite the promises of politicians, elections haven't solved all of our problems. People who totally buy into political rhetoric are clearly naive, but I think this can lead some to the opposite extreme. These people believe that the only smart, savvy position is to assume that everything a politician says is a lie and voting doesn't matter. But just because one extreme is wrong doesn't make the opposite extreme right. Voting in elections clearly make a difference. While only 4% of Americans think politicians keep their word, study after study show that most campaign promises are kept. But you don't need studies to see the differences voting makes. It's happening right in front of us. When the Supreme Court reversed abortion rights, every single justice appointed by a Republican voted to eliminate a woman's right to choose, and every single justice appointed by a Democrat voted to protect it. When it voted to legalize gay marriage, every justice but one voted along party lines. Biden and Harris passed the IRA, the biggest investment in clean energy and the environment in U.S. history, while Trump withdrew from the Paris Climate Accord and rolled back environmental regulations. Elections have started and ended wars, given us civil rights protections, and led to an attempt to subvert the peaceful transition of power. You may wish they accomplished more, but it's undeniable that they have an effect, which means voting makes a difference. But what about just one vote? In an election with so many votes, some people believe that their vote doesn't matter. The problem is, it's not just one person with this attitude, and the result can clearly make a difference. Think about littering. If one person throws trash on the ground in a park, it won't really have much of an impact. But as more and more people think this way, the park will quickly become overrun with garbage. Even if each bit of trash doesn't make much difference, the attitude clearly has an impact. Because a significant number of people might not vote because they think it doesn't matter, the result has a major impact on the election. The world is full of situations like these. You need to ask yourself whether you're going to be the type of person that returns their shopping cart, or the type that litters in the park. Another argument I hear is that voting isn't the best way to bring about real change. That we should be protesting, building new institutions, exposing bad actors, or taking other forms of direct action. And this is probably true. Directly working to make a difference can bring about real change and can be more rewarding than electoral politics. But it's also obviously true that none of that should stop you from voting. You still have 364 days and 23 hours to go out into the world and make a difference. 
No one believes that ticking a box next to the least bad candidate's name will somehow invalidate all of the other work you do, and it just might help. But wait, I hear your objection. What if Harris doesn't stand for what I stand for? Maybe she is better overall, but on the issue most important to me, I don't see much difference. This could be because you dislike her handling of the war in Gaza, or because you want socialism, or any other issue that's important to you personally. Well, the first thing I'd say is look into what Trump said about crushing pro-Palestine protests, or Biden and Harris's policy on unions. But that's not what this video is about. What if there is some issue you care deeply about and you aren't happy with how Harris is handling it? Well, imagine that, instead, your dream candidate, Bob, was running. They prioritize the issues you care most about and don't waste time on the ones you don't. But their poll numbers aren't good, and it's looking like they won't be elected. When you talk to your friends, they agree that Bob is probably better than the alternative, but they just aren't excited. They disagree with Bob on one particular issue or dislike some of his priorities. When the election comes, a lot of them stay home. Meanwhile, your opponents have united around their candidate, and when they win, the policies that you care about lose, along with the ones your friends care about. And now, women have to wear oversized bonnets everywhere. The reality is, your perfect candidate is someone else's compromise candidate. If you only vote for the candidates that excite you, all you're doing is handing the win to your opposition and setting back your own cause. The way you win elections is through coalitions, groups with different interests banding together to make incremental change. And if we embrace it, that means there will be support for the candidates you are excited about when they're up for election. But if I just keep voting, how will the party know what I want? Won't they just keep doing the same things? First off, there are many ways to make your voice heard, and political parties are surprisingly receptive to on-the-ground organizing. But more importantly, voting actually is a great way to make your voice heard. Political parties spend hundreds of millions of dollars on polling and research to determine what their constituents want. But you know whose opinion they don't care about? Non-voters. Seriously, people wonder why policy is dominated by the old and wealthy. They're the ones who are voting. If you want the party to hear your concerns, not voting is one of the worst things you could do. Are these the real reasons some people consider not voting for the candidate they acknowledge is better? Actually, I don't think so. I think the real reason tends to sound like, that candidate didn't earn my vote, or I can't vote for someone that did X, or I won't vote for the lesser of two evils. It almost sounds like they think voting that way would be immoral. But what makes something right or wrong? People have a lot of thoughts about this, but I really think that for most people, it boils down to making the world a better place. We should try to make people's lives better and help them flourish while reducing suffering, injustice, and cruelty. If you believe one candidate is the lesser of two evils, it's probably because you believe the world will be better if they win, or at least better than if their opponent wins. The lives of the poor and oppressed will be better, the environment will be better cared for, there'll be less discrimination and injustice. But if that's the case, then why would voting for the better candidate be wrong? I think the real motivation behind this idea is usually that voting for someone you don't like doesn't feel good. When you refuse to vote, it can make you feel independent, like a free thinker. It feels good to throw up your hands in disgust and walk away from the system. When an elected official inevitably does something you disagree with, it feels good to disavow them. But remember what we said about right and wrong. Feeling smug about not voting doesn't make the world a better place. Refusing to support the better candidate because it feels good doesn't help anyone. In the end, the question you have to ask yourself is, do I do the thing that feels good or do the thing that makes the world a better place? You know, some people like to say, if voting made any difference, they wouldn't let us do it. Well, if voting didn't make a difference, I suspect so many people wouldn't be working so hard and spending so much to suppress the vote. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, consider sending it to that one friend you have that you think might feel this way. If you don't know one, you could always like, comment, or subscribe to help amplify the message.